This is part 73 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is open redirect vulnerability and more importantly, how to fix it in ASP.NET Core. First, let's understand what makes your application vulnerable to open redirect attacks. Your application is vulnerable if the following two conditions are true. Your application redirects to a URL that's specified via the request, such as the query string of form data and the redirection is performed without checking if the URL is a local URL. At the moment, within our application, both these conditions are true. Notice this login method. It accepts return URL as a parameter. The value for this parameter is coming from the request via the query string parameter. And then upon a successful login, we are redirecting the user to that provided URL without checking if that URL is a local URL. So our application is vulnerable to open redirect attacks. Now let's understand how a hacker could use the security hole that we just opened up to perform an open redirect attack with an example. It all starts with tricking the user of your application to click on a link in an email where the return URL is set to the attacker's website. Look at the example that we have here. I want to go to your website with domain name example.com and by looking at the first part of the URL here, I am confident this is the authentic website that I want to go to. But then if you look at the return URL here, it is set to example.com. But instead of using letter L to confuse the user, the attacker has used letter I and this is the attacker's website. You might be thinking this URL is not that long and I see return URL as the first query string parameter and it is set to a different website. So I may not click on this link. Well, I agree with you. Not all users of your application may click on this link. And also keep in mind, not every user will look at the entire URL before they click on a link. They may just look at the first domain part. It looks authentic and they may click on it. So all the attacker wants here is that one vulnerable user of your application to click on this link. Another trick the attacker could use is include several query string parameters in the URL and among them return URL is the last query string parameter. When additional query string parameters are sent to the server, the server simply ignores them. It doesn't throw any exception. And remember, not all users will look at every query string parameter before clicking on a link, especially if you're tempted with an offer that looks like this. There is a sale going on and we get 90% off. And if we view the page source, notice the return URL is set to presumetech.com. The attacker could very easily set this to his malicious website. So when I click on this image now, we go to our localhost login page and look at the return URL here. It is set to presumetech.com. This means when I provide a valid username and password and successfully log in, this website is going to redirect me to presumetech.com because the return URL is set to presumetech.com. Notice what happens when I click on this login button. As expected, we are redirected to the specified return URL, in this case presumetech.com. Now, an attacker could specify his malicious website as the return URL. In that case, we are redirected to the attacker's website and the attacker will design the login page of his website exactly like the login page of our application. To further confuse you, the attacker may display a message saying invalid username password combination. You might think maybe on the first login attempt, I provided incorrect credentials and then you might enter your username password again without realizing you are on the attacker's website. And then when you click this login button, you're actually submitting your credentials on the attacker's website. So at this point, the attacker has your login details and he will redirect you back to the authentic websites homepage. Now notice when we go back from regimetech.com to localhost, we are actually logged in and we can say that because we see the logout link instead of register and login links. However, the attacker wouldn't redirect you to the login page of the authentic site because he knows you're already logged in on the authentic website. So in order not to raise any eyebrows, he will redirect you maybe to the homepage of the authentic website. 
During this entire process, the end user does not even know his login details are compromised because of the redirect that happened to the attacker's website and then back to the authentic website. He might simply think his second login attempt was successful and that's the reason he is seeing the authentic website's homepage and the logout link on the right. Now let's quickly recap the steps that causes this open redirect vulnerability. First, the user is tricked into clicking a link in an email where the return URL is set to the attacker's website. The user then provides his login details and logs in on the authentic website. On a successful login, the authentic website redirects the user to the attacker's website because the return URL is set to the attacker's website. The user then logs in again on the attacker's website thinking that the first login attempt was unsuccessful. At this point, the attacker has got your login details and in order not to raise any eyebrows, the user is redirected back to the authentic website's homepage. During this entire process, the user does not know that his login details are compromised. Our obvious next question is, how do we prevent these open redirect attacks? At the moment, in our application, we have this open redirect vulnerability because we are redirecting to external websites without any validation. In our application, if we really have a use case for redirecting to external websites, make sure you're only redirecting to known trusted websites. In our specific use case right here, we do not have the need to redirect the user to an external website. We want to redirect the user to another URL within our own application on a successful login. That is, we want to do a local redirect. To do a local redirect, instead of using this redirect method, use local redirect. As the name implies, this method redirects only to local URLs. If a non-local URL is provided, that is, if an external URL is provided, it throws an exception. Let's look at this in action. Notice, in the URL, at the moment, we do not have the return URL query string parameter. That means, when we log in, we are redirected to the index action of the home controller, which is local to our application. Let me log out. Before we do anything else, in launch settings.json file, let's change the ASP.NET Core environment variable value to development so we can see the actual exception details instead of the custom error view. Now let's click on this malicious link. Notice the return URL is set to presumetech.com, which is an external URL. Now let's try to log in again and see what happens. There we go. We have an exception. The supplied URL is not local. This is good because we have just prevented an open redirect attack. If you do not want an exception and still want to prevent open redirect attacks, instead of using local redirect, use redirect method. And before doing the redirect, check if this provided URL is a local URL. We do that by using URL dot is local URL method. As the name implies, this method returns true if the provided URL is a local URL, otherwise false. If it's a local URL, we redirect the user to that local URL, else to the index action of the home controller. Notice the return URL is still an external URL. So when I log in now, instead of throwing an exception, we should be redirected to the index action of the home controller. There we go. In ASP.NET Core, to prevent open redirect attacks, either use local redirect method or is local URL method. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.